Could God, and it might be a loaded question, could God inspire us to know what to expect in heaven? Could he give us a glimpse as he has others of what heaven is like? Yes. Why doesn't he? Why doesn't God show us what heaven is like? Like he's taken others in vision, John, Sister White, others. Why doesn't he do it with all of us? Oh yeah, she was in depression for days. Didn't want to get out of bed. But couldn't God fix that too? Couldn't He insert the chip, show us what heaven is like, and give us the strength to get up the next day? Why doesn't He? We'll get other than. Okay, so if we see what's there, we might serve him out of what we're going to get, is what you're saying. Okay, very good point, very good point. And that's what I was going to say, you know, I heard the story one time, like you say, when a millionaire was looking for a wife, he would drive up and love. You going to have the fish. You're going to have the fish. Yeah, 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 you're going to and who he is. Yep. There's no sense. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. I'm, Dara? I just think that sometimes God shows us little glimpses of heaven. Oh, yeah. Definitely. And it's not necessarily in dreams and visions. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes just sitting by the, the street, you know, listening to the the, the quiet time of God. And, exactly. Mm -hmm. Or in actions of a brother or sister that comes to help you. You see love, you see kindness, you see forgiveness. You see all of that. Very true. I think sometimes that we don't recognize it for what it is. Amen. I can agree with that. I think, and this is just because of things that I'm dealing with, but I think it's a faith issue. Do you hope for it because you trust me? If I showed you everything, there's no faith involved. It requires nothing on your part. God gave everything. And all that he requires from us is belief. Do we believe? If we don't believe, I mean, Jesus said, Blessed are you that have seen and believed, but blessed, much more blessed are they that have seen not and yet believe. God wants us to put our trust 110% in him. We're not at that point as a church, as a people. And unfortunately, we usually, historically speaking, you don't get to that point until you are at the very bottom of the bottom. What was the, Jamie, what did they say last, two weekends ago? You don't know that Jesus is all you need until Jesus is all you have. That is so true. God wants us to have that faith in him 24-7. If God says it, it's going to happen. And we can say we believe it. And this is what I'm dealing with. But do my actions reflect my faith? If my actions don't reflect it, I don't have faith. I can say, Lord, I don't know. Whatever I ask for. If I'm not planning for that. I mean, look at Noah. God said build an ark. And he gave him the dimensions. How long did it take? to build that ark 120 years that's some faith I mean you got brothers and sisters building a boat they've never built a boat before not just as their boat it's a huge boat because God says it's going to rain it's never rained before we're in the middle of you know paradise at that point it wasn't that far from the fall of man things are a whole lot better than they are now you got you know, people over here helping people over there, but after six months, some of them start, well, nothing's going to happen. We're going to stop building a little bit. We'll come back in a few months. Then you got people in the world coming, making fun of you constantly for 120 years. That's more than we live. What kind of faith is that? Yeah. I mean, can you imagine, Mrs. Noah, honey, are you sure? I mean, all of our resources need it. We got to do this. We got to eat this. We got 
All of us got to go for the ark? Are you sure that's what God said? And then when God said, get in the ark, and the hand of God closed the door, did it start raining? Seven days inside the ark, shut in by the hand of God. You ain't going nowhere. <laughs> you ain't going nowhere. But what's going through your mind? Are you doubting after three days? I mean, people prepare for a barbecue outside. We got all animals right here. We can just have one big bonfire. Not a cloud in the sky. Do we have the faith that Noah did? Do you think Noah would have been saved if he doubted God? He would have been no different than anybody outside the boat. We're going to have to go through that seven-day experience, guys. That's why God is telling us now to build a boat, to get in the boat, to get our families in the boat, because he's going to close the door, the door called probation, and we're not getting out, and nobody else is getting in. And there's going to be a time of testing of faith to see if we're faithful to God. If we don't build that faith today, it's not going to come tomorrow. little pieces of heaven on earth. Sister White says our home should be a little piece of heaven on earth. Our church should be a little piece of heaven on earth because our homes are a little piece of heaven on earth. You get peace here, peace here, peace here together, you should have a bigger piece of heaven in the church. And if we don't have that, the fault lies with us and not in God because he's promised to give it to us. We can experience love, fellowship, forgiveness, everything that's in heaven. What we can't we can't experience to the level that we will then because of our sinful nature. And we can't experience the physical part of heaven. But God does give us glimpses to give us hope to encourage that desire to be there and to walk more like Him. The, load of faith can move mountains <laughs> if we stop and realize because our faith is size of mustard seed. Should not be in the, in the red. 
our church budget should be more than what it is. We should be doing more outreach, even if we have to go without. But guys, we won't go without. Because if we do it in faith, God is going to bless. He is going to provide. There was a, we saw in Argentina when I was there, this mission report from a guy, I want to say it was a Virginia millionaire. I worked from the bottom all the way up, did his business. Um, and he gave, I don't know how many, hundreds of thousands a year to different projects and people and to the church and the outreach. And he never felt a loss. Money kept coming in. And so they would go and interview him. How are you doing this? What's the secret? He said, I don't know. I just keep shoveling money into God's treasure house. And God keeps shoveling back to me. The only difference is he's got a bigger shovel. So I'm coming out more blessed. But I keep giving. Guys, that's the way it is. That's the secret. The more we give, the more we're going to get. But we can't give expecting to get. That's the wrong attitude. We give because we care about the people. We love the people. And we want to see the gospel going forth. If we do it that way, we're not going to lack for anything. That lawsuit's going to go away. That $4,000 bill on the dresser, don't even worry about it. <laughs> I mean, that is faith. That is moving forward based on faith. If we're not doing that, we don't have faith. And we can't have the hope of enjoying this new earth. It steps on our toes, guys. Sorry, getting sidetracked. Okay, Monday, from dust to life. <clears throat> God created man out of? The dust. Is he going to recreate man? Yes, he is. Uh, what is the point of a resurrection and judgment if judgment is already passed when a person dies? Because that is the belief. I heard it this week at the funeral. I was so proud of that man that got and spoke until he got about halfway through. <laughs> he read the right verses. The dead are asleep. The dead know nothing. He did so good until he got the last half. Everybody that died is in heaven. <laughs> Lord, help us. Help us. I mean, he said everybody. Everybody that's died up to now is in heaven. Hitler. I mean, I can just go through a list of people that I would question. But <clears throat> what's the point of a judgment? Why does God need to recreate if they're already in heaven? definitely, you know, God's word is going to be fulfilled in such a way that everybody will see without a shadow of a doubt the consequences of disobeying God and going against his law. But my question is a rhetorical one saying if everybody dies and goes to heaven in heaven you're going to have a body. You're not just going to be spirit. So why does he need to bring you back to earth recreate your body to take you back to heaven? It doesn't make sense. I mean, it just doesn't do that. So by believing in a new heaven, a new earth, and a new creation, we believe in the state of the dead. It's all connected like we saw earlier. God doesn't isolate this. Everything is related. Let's look at Isaiah 26, 19 and Daniel 12, 2. And just remind us the text to talk about what happened when someone dies. <clears throat> 26, 19 and Daniel 12, 2. Next verse, Daniel, 12. <laughs> He has to recreate them. 
this shows God's authority as the creator, which goes back to God's authority of the Sabbath. I mean, it's all linked together. We can't take one. Have you ever played that, that, that game, Jenga? The block stacks where you stack all the blocks, you have to take one out at a time. If we take that one out, the whole thing is going to fall. You have to have all of it. Um, Tuesday, restoration. I didn't realize it was late, so we're going to have to hurry. Thoughts on Tuesday, restoration of human dominion. Do we have dominion over everything now like Adam did in the garden? No. Can you go out and head a great white shark bleeding and not expect to, <laughs> to get bitten? No. Animals today fear man for the most part. We don't have that dominion over them that Adam did. That's something that was lost. That will be regained in the new earth. God is going to restore that sense of dominion, that responsibility that he gave to, the, to mankind that we didn't value. Uh, more restoration. Wednesday talks about the food chain, talks about um, killing, and how that's not going to take place in heaven. Sorry, Miss Angela, but there's going to be no um, <coughs> McDonald's in heaven. Uh, every creature is going to eat grass. Can y'all imagine? Can you imagine a lion sitting there much on grass with straight teeth instead of little jagged pointing ones? No, it's all going to be changed. It's going to be eaten. There's going to be no death. Flower's not going to die. I imagine you can pick it. It's just going to stay living. It's not going to die. That is, if you want to pick it. I mean, everything is going to be perfect. We can't imagine life without death. Everything dies. Well, you know, I can't imagine something being perfect because here on earth, it's not. It's not. You know, sometimes I'm going to get forward. Well, that's, maybe that's why we're going to have a tree that makes 12 fruit. He won't get bored. <laughs> it's a constant change. But do we also see how God can take something that he never meant to be and turn into a blessing? Death can be a blessing. It can be. Not just death of a sick person that can't do it anymore in the suffering, but... Have y'all ever driven up the mountains in the fall weather with all the colors, the beautiful colors? That leaves is dying. That is death. But even in death, God shows that there is beauty, that there is hope, that he is still in charge. And we can take it a bit further. I love object lessons. The leaf falls because the compost so that the new life can spring up in the spring. Death just prepares you for that new resurrection. God will take anything that Satan can throw at him and turn it into a blessing even if he didn't will it to be, to start off with. Uh, restoration of relationship with God. This is the most important one. This was the highlight of the week. If we stop and think of everything that this entails, we will desire nothing else than this right here. I always said I would love to know what it feels like to have my face radiating so that others can see because I have been with God. Not nothing for me personally, but I just want to know what that feels like. I want people to have to cover up themselves to look up. I can't, I can't be with you because there's something different about you. You've been with God. How exciting that must be! How humbling of an experience for Moses, for the disciples, the Mount of Transfiguration, to know I come down. I don't know there's a difference. Moses didn't realize that his face was bright, you know, glowing so brightly because that became the norm to him. He had spent 40 days with God. He didn't realize it until he came in contact with the people of God that said, cover yourself, we can't bear it. That's not going to happen in heaven. Yep. And that is, that is what the clothing was for Adam and Eve. It was the light radiating from God's presence. There's no need to hide anything because God is covering you. That is heaven. That is what we want to long for. I have so many questions I want to ask God. I mean, I have questions for the disciples too, and you know, make a running list. So many questions to ask God. I remember as a kid, we went to Church of God, Pentecostal, and at the back of the church, they had this huge painting. It took, I mean, almost the whole wall 
and it was nothing but a pair of hands that was outstretched. And I remember as a kid, always looking at that picture and wondering, is this what God's hands look like? Is this what, you know, is it this angle? Are they this strong? Are they, you know, and I, and I wonder, and so I look forward to seeing what God physically looks like. I look forward to looking into his eyes and trying to capture the amount of love that I can't begin to comprehend now. And to have him audibly speak to me, I'm not worthy. But through Christ, he enables me to have that hope to do it. This is what heaven is all about. It's not a place. It's not a fruit. It's not a mansion. It's not a crystal sea. It's not streaks of gold. That's icing on the cake. The cake, the dessert, the meal, the banquet is communion uninterrupted, unaltered with God. Once we realize that, once we thirst for that more than water and hunger for that more than food, then we will live the life that God has called us to here to prepare us for that. Because we cannot go before the presence of God with sin in our lives. God is a consuming fire. You won't make it. God is calling us to renounce those sins now, to come into his everlasting gospel now, to have the faith now, to renounce self now, so that we can enjoy all of this plus face-to-face time with him in the future. And guys, it's a really near future. Really, really near. If we only knew. I pray, Lord, open my eyes, take the scales off like you did with the others. Let me see what's going on. Because like I said, it's easy for me to get comfortable. I mean, it's a battle. Lord, don't let me get comfortable. Don't let me take my eyes off of you. Don't let me get focused on professional goals. Don't let me get focused on this, that, or the other and neglect you, because if so, I'm off the ark. Right now, the door is open, and I can have one foot in and one foot out, and I've got to make a decision. But come time God closes the door, if you got one foot out, he's going to move you right out. And there's no going back in. We have to make the determined decision to be in man. When Noah and his family and animals were in the ark, that was heaven. God was there with them. The Spirit was there with them. Look what happened around them. Can you imagine the screams they heard? Can you imagine the stench? I mean, I'm a softy. When I went to Mexico, they always told us, don't give the kids money. They're going to come to you, you know, all dirty and poor. They're going to ask for money, but don't give it to them because they're going to take it to mom and dad, and mom and dad's going to use it for drugs. you got a two-year-old coming, covered in tar, no clothes, barefoot, asking for a piece of gum and some money. I gave him money and a piece of gum. I'm a softy. <laughs> no, just don't let them use it for the bad things, you know. I can't do it. Can you imagine hearing millions of people die, scream, beg, plead to get into the ark? Mothers throwing their babies at the ark for you to catch and put inside, and you can't do it. I don't want to be in that group. I mean, they tied their babies to animals because they knew animals would search for the highest place to get away from the water in hopes of saving their children. It does us no good to tie our children to things that are going to die, guys. It does no good to tie our children to things of this world, to entertainment, to whatever. If we do that, they're going to die right along with what we tie them to. We have to bound our kids to Christ. Christ is the only one. We have to have that faith that will get us through those seven days of no rain while everybody else is against us, setting the fires around the ark. Because they're going to set fires around us. We're not going to be able to do anything except for fall on the faith that we've built up prior to. And if we haven't built it up, we won't have to worry about it because we'll be on the other side lighting the fires for the other ones. I mean, that's what it breaks down to. But we do have hope. We have hope of salvation. We have hope of paradise, which includes communion with God. And again, to me, that's the main thing. If I can just see my God and hug my God and say thank you, that, that's all. That you makes know, it worth it. I'm encouraging the week where the says you can thank the Lord if you find Yeah. Uh, Over many. What about you? Uh, it's a question of that. Mm-hmm. That's not it. It's a word. He didn't say the Lord where you live perfect. Hold on, hold on, hold on. 
You're not always going to sin. If you do, you won't make it to heaven. Church is dedicated to it. the church, my brother, my sister, my mom, or dad, anybody else. No matter what they do, it does not affect my relationship with God. It doesn't matter. There's, There's going to be apostasy. There's, There's going to be people, Lord forbid, maybe in this room, maybe, maybe me, that's, that's going to turn. I pray there isn't. I pray we're not going to But it's going to happen. We can't let that affect us. We have to have, that's why my sister says this is individual work. Millage was doing great things. The village goes great things. It's not going to save me. It doesn't affect me and my relationship with God in any way other than encourage me to seek Him more. If we have that mindset, we're going to be lost. It has to be an individual daily dying to self and seeking for God. Anything else won't work. Won't work. But He does give us that hope of restoration. He does give us that hope of a new heaven and new earth. And I pray that we seek that with all of our hearts every day. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for being with us today. We thank you for opening our eyes to your truth, to your word. And Lord, again, we ask for forgiveness when we have not done things the way that you want us to do them. When we have let self take control, when we take our eyes off of you and put them on this world, or anything else for that matter, forgive us, Lord. Help us. Give us that eye sound that we need so that we may rightly see things, that we may rightly interpret your word and rightly apply it to our lives. We want to be beacons of light for you, Lord. We want to find ourselves and our families in the ark when you shut the door. And we want to have the faith necessary to get through the times that are ahead and that blessed, blessed hope of living with you face to face eternally. Lord, we know that wherever you are is heaven, as we said earlier. So right now we ask that you would come and that you would inhabit us so that our lives, in some small fraction of a way, could experience a piece of heaven today on this blessed Holy Sabbath day. Be with my brothers and sisters here. You know each one, each trial, each temptation that Satan is throwing, each obstacle that may stand in the way. I pray that you would go ahead of each one of us, making the crooked way straight, and that that straight path would lead us straight to you. Break us on your son, Lord. Break us of self. Give us your spirit. And bless us again as we continue to serve it, worshiping you in spirit and in truth on your holy day. Thank you for hearing our prayer and for answering it. In Christ's name, amen. God bless you. <laughs> We'd like to move right along, if, if at all possible. This is a portion of our service where we have testimonies to a prayer request. Who'd like to start out? Testimony or prayer request? Yes, sir. I'd like to prayer request. 